Okay, now, <clears throat> we got that done. We're going to hijack the proceedings a little bit here. So I'd like to call uh, Mark up to the uh, podium. Take it away. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. Um, Pastor Appreciation is October, and uh, Bob, we wanted to appreciate you, but uh, you were gone. So what we're going to do now is everybody got the cue? We are going to do something special for you. Um, we will start with a little bit of thing here. That uh, Pastor Appreciation Day was established in the U.S. in 1992 by a group of pastors and church leaders to honor those who serve in ministry, usually celebrated in the second Sunday in October. But uh, we did it last week, actually, um, and you were gone. So we're going to do it today. The scripture based on this is from the writings of Paul when he wrote 1 Timothy 15, 17. The elders who direct the affairs of the church are well worth of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. Uh, reinforce this idea in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, Bob, hard worker, who care for you in the Lord and admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. The idea was inspired in 1992 uh, that originally was a clergy appreciation month, but now it's actually a day. But we're doing it in November. And uh, what does 50 signif signify, Bob? Uh, we have a slide that we're going to put up here. Um, it's from the Worldwide Church of God, headquarters in Pasadena, California, certification of ordination. And I'll read it here. Be it known by this official document that Robert John Marot, Marot, <laughs> Merritt Millman, I screwed up your name, I'm sorry, has chosen according to the will of God to become an elder in the Worldwide Church of God, and he is qualified in character and by cons consternation, that's a word I don't know, but it's a good word, uh, education experience, and it meets the spiritual qualifications as duly obtained on the 17th day of October 1973. Do you remember that, Bob? Aha! Uh -huh. By laying on the hands of the minister of the body upon recognition by the district superintendent of the body and approved by the Worldwide Church of God headquarters. So yeah, that was done, and there's the seal, and uh, there it is, and signed by Herbert W. Armstrong, and yeah. Do you have this somewhere? We, we, I don't know how we got a copy of this, but yeah, there it is. And now what we've done is actually Sue has been about some crazy business of contacting a whole bunch of people to do some telegram messages. And usually when you do telegrams, they're like counted by the character. Well, some of these are a bit long, so uh, you know we can call them telegrams, you can call them emails, but we're going to go through 10 of them. So I'd like to call up uh, Ken to read the first five. Oops, we didn't plan this. Uh, Sue did everything, but uh, we missed the mic set up here. I did, yeah. Congratulations, Pastor Bob, on reaching 50 years in ordained ministry and surpassing that. And it's nice to honor you today. Um, as we heard earlier, expect the unexpected. And uh, I know we have a sermon coming. And I just would remind you that uh, Apostle Paul, um, when he was stuck for time, he preached till midnight. So, <laughs> so don't worry about it. The first message is from David Silcox. Uh, David Silcox was at Ambassador College in England back when Pastor Bob was there. Uh, his father was, the, was a, the gardener there. He's the one that restored the property there to its beauty from being wild, and uh, one of the first members of the church, and first deacons in the church in England, so he's got, they've got a long history. Some of you know some of the Silcoxes. Christine might know some of them from summer camp in Scotland. Brent per Parrott was there. He, he probably would. Um, Maria, Jerry's late wife, was there, and some others. So this is from David Silcox. Many thanks for your note, and it would be, would be a pleasure to say a few words on the auspicious occasion. Thanks for asking me. I have known Bob Millman for over 50 years, as well as his parents, Bob and Joan. 
Indeed, Joan Millman was a great friend and mentor for many years. My real interaction with Bob came at Paynton on many occasions over the last 20 years or so. He was a most welcome visitor and his presence was, and his presence was to me a great bonus and his experience was invaluable. If you don't know what Paynton is, it's a feast site in England. His sermons were much anticipated and I have conversations with members on his sermons on the book of Revelation. I considered Bob a great friend and confidant. I also appreciate his willingness to reduce my wine cellar at Paynton with many late night and early morning sessions on spiritual matters, of course, such sacrifice. It is hard to believe he has been a minister for 50 years. Are you sure you're that old, Bob? <laughs> but it has been 50 years of dedicated service for which he can be very proud. I would conclude by saying that there are many people across Canada, Europe, and other areas who have much to thank Bob Millman for, including me. And I know we will not forget his patient endurance through trials and difficulties. A job well done, Bob, and have a great day. I will raise it last to you on November 5th. White wine, of course. And thank God for your friendship, David Silcox. The next one is from David Sheridan, who many of you all know. I first met David Sheridan in, in Belfast uh, when I first started attending church there. I'd been to his home, met his mother and his sister, but he was in college in Brickett Wood at that time, and I've known him for quite a while, and so has Pastor Bob. Um, he says, Bob Millman, 50 years of ministry. Greetings from Calgary to Bob and Shelley and all who are gathered to celebrate this remarkable milestone of 50 years in full-time ministry. Well done, Bob. Very few pastors reach the half-century mark. I retired after 48 years, so you're leading the way. For five decades from Ambassador College graduation in Pasadena, California, in 1973, you have journeyed along with our denomination to where our church is today at Grace, as Grace Communion International. Thank you for your leadership, loyalty, dedication, and determination to carry on in its ups and downs of our journey from blinding legalism, authoritarianism, and elitism to the fresh winds of still amazing grace. The Barner Research Group reports that 42% of pastors today have considered leaving the ministry. But you, Bob, have weathered the challenges and remain committed to fulfilling your calling to shepherd the flock. Over the years, and in many congregations in BC, Alberta, and Saskatchewan, you have faithfully served the needs of the membership. Baptizing and, nourishing, uh, baptizing and nurturing along the way and battled through the challenging 1990s during the transformation of our denomination. Under the leadership of the living head of the church, Jesus Christ, you have been a leader in our denomination here in Canada and have shared the love of God and the good news of the gospel to many and helped change hearts and minds. I especially remember the many lengthy meetings of pastors when you would brighten up our time together with delightful wit and colorful stories. I won't elaborate on your vivid and hilarious description of a visit to your doctor's office to, ho to have a routine exam most older men now have. The details would have to be censored. The wives of the pastors at our meeting had no idea what you had experienced but then they responded that you had no idea what it is like to go through labor and have a baby. <laughs> well, Bob, I have always enjoyed your engaging teaching style and articulate preaching with rich spiritual insights. I know you will continue to follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hopefully in good health during the years ahead. Again, congratulations. Enjoy today's 50th anniversary celebration. It is richly deserved. Your brother in ministry, David. For a telegram, that was long. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is from George Patrickson. Bob, happy 50th year work, happy 50th year work anniversary. It just seems like yesterday when I crossed the border to meet up with you 
and John Koenig near Bellingham, Washington, just before you started work in Canada. Thank you for a half century of dedication, leadership, and remarkable contributions, and for your service to the brethren and the church. Also, my thanks for the many fun times we enjoyed together. One that sticks out in my mind is the, is the YOU ski trip to Sunshine, where both of us were learning to ski. How can I ever forget our riding the T-bar together and our struggles not to cross our skis or knock each other down and your comment that we now know why God says you shall not yoke an ox and an ass together. <laughs> I still chuckle whenever I think of it. Bob, thanks again for your 50 years of service and all the best for the future. George Patrickson. And the next one is from Glenn Weber. Um, I don't know if Glenn was in college in Brickett Wood when Pastor Bob was there, but over the years they've met. Um, I had a chance to drive across the United States in 1973 and had a chance to stop at, uh, at the Weber Farm in Wheatland, Wyoming, and uh, went skiing with his brother Gary. And this is 2023, that was 1973, that was 50 years ago. It's a long time. From Glenn Weber, he now lives in, uh, in, in Colorado. Um, I, uh, and uh, he says, I started on salaried ministry in Brickett Wood Ministerial Trainee with Barry Bourne in Warrington, Leeds area on June the 10th, 1973. I realized that that was even before Pastor Bob started. Then Glenn says, congratulations for Robert J. or Bob Millman by Glenn A. Weber, retired GCI pastor. In August 1974, I first arrived in Kelowna, B.C. to serve as assistant pastor with Ron Miller. At the time, Bob Millman had become the pastor of the Kamloops Church, still an assistant to Ron Miller, if I remember, corre if I remember correctly. One of my first assignments was to go visiting with Bob. I remember we visited an indigenous family and another couple. A few months later, my wife Connie and I moved to Castlegar, B.C. to start a new church. Throughout the coming years of our time in Castlegar and later in Prince George, we had regular connections with Bob and Gail through conferences, youth activities, and many occasions. After seven years in Regina, Saskatchewan, we moved to Red Deer, where Bob had previously pastored, and he replaced us in Regina. Bob has been faith a faithful servant to members of the churches he has served to to Grace Communion International and Jesus Christ for the past 50 years. Thank you for your service, Bob, and congratulations on this golden anniversary. Glenn and Connie Weber. Glenn was actually here the first service we had here in end of August. I missed that one, but uh, that's Jerry's fault. But anyway. <laughs> and... Uh, one more I have is from Gary Moore, who pastored this Edmonton church at one time and was the director in Canada. Uh, 50 years in ministry. Wow. Chatting with Wendy about this, we both thought of the, of the title of Eugene Peterson's classic, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. Bob has stayed faithful to his calling to ministry through all the ups and downs 50 years of life will bring and has, and has brought to him. Bob's energy and work ethic have always impressed me. He is creative and gifted with the spoken and written work. I think that's supposed to be written word. And he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. However, the biggest and most important characteristic for me has always been his pastor's heart and care for the brethren. For that, I salute you, my brother, and join the celebration of 50 years of faithful participation in the ministry of Jesus Christ, Gary and Wendy Moore. So, some very nice comments for Pastor Bob, undeserved. I could speak from here, I think so. So, we'll continue. We've got five more, Bob. Um, this is from... Um, Another, uh, this is Doug Smith. I remember Doug Smith. 
Uh, Dear Bob, congratulations on reaching 50 years of pastoral ministry with a remarkable milestone that speaks of itself. You've achieved this good marker as a good shepherd of the sheep that our chief shepherd has put in your care. With both diligence and creativity, you have not only guided us, but also joined us, our brothers and sisters, in journeying with God uh, and to God. Your effectiveness and success as a pastor have displayed the qualities and the characteristics to which the heart and core of Christian ministry. Two of the most notable are being aware and personal and personal present, presence. Uh, these have been and are a powerful and profoundly meaningful part of your ministry of love, care, and concern for those you have served. Throughout five decades of pastoring, whether to celebrate and rejoice with family at the birth of a child or to weep and to grieve with a family member who's lost a loved one, you were available. And your personal presence was encouraging and reassuring. Plus, your ongoing availability and personal presence has not been limited to just uh, the spiritual lives of membership, but have also included day-to-day physical needs. You have assigned the the, uh, projects for a summer camp to enjoy opportunities. I guess that's probably the new, new... Americans or new Canadians, um, you know, the, you've, you've surrounded them up. Um, so, so you've employed them for opportunities for finding suitable housing. Your name, it, and you probably would have been involved with it. You name it, and Bob, you would have been involved with it. Remember, even Christ built a fire and fried fish so he can enjoy a meal and fellowship with his disciples. Bob, I'm not able to capture the fullness of richness, richness of your 50 years of ministry in a few lines of writing. Thankfully, the lives of our sheep do this and do what's really mattered. You have been a faithful shepherd who has provided the sheep with green pastures and still waters, allowing our chief shepherd to restore their souls. So my hope and prayer for you is this. When you move into your next phase of life, you will find restful pastures, uh, pastures refreshing water that will continue to revitalize your soul. May his hand rest gently and bountifully upon you and your family. With love, Doug Smith. Uh, the next one is from uh, Jane, Doug and Jane Webster. Dear Mr. Millman, has it been 50 years already? What a privilege to know you for so many decades. Thank you for your insightful sermons that provided and the lifelong teaching. And thank you for helping our families along with so many others in the time of need. Best wishes to you as you spread English humor uh, and continue to touch the hearts of people. Sincerely yours, Doug and Jane Webster. Uh, Paul Michaud. I've known Bob for a good portion of his 50 years in ministry. We experience, uh, together, uh, we experience together many different mountains and valleys in life in general as the many challenges and pressures involved in tending the flock. Describing Bob as an energizer bunny doesn't even fit, but the term eager beaver does. When the Millman family arrived in Westlock, little did we realize how busy we would become. The Westlock circuit included congregations of Athabasca, Atmore, uh, and Fort McMurray. Bob was very diligent in most weekends, ended up drove to Fort McMurray Friday afternoon, met with the congregation in the evening, and stayed overnight. On Saturday morning, he'd drive back to Athabasca, preach a morning service, then get back to Westlock for services in the afternoon. Wow. The years that the Millman spent in Westlock were busy times. Combined services were usually held in Rochester and have many fond memories of those wonderful times of feasting and fellowship. Bob was very committed to making sure that all the youth had the opportunity to be included in the many activities offered. Thanks to Bob and others involved in leadership, our own family and many others were able to experience new horizons like skiing in the mountains. I know our family would not have been able to afford these extras without the support of the church. Being a pastor is not always easy. But though Bob has made it, continued to, make, to be a good sir, sir, shepherd who looks after the flock and always on the alert for the discouraged, confused, brokenhearted. Happy 50th anniversary, Pastor Bob. Love and prayers, Paul Majot. I got a lengthy one from Lee Smithson, uh, Smitty as we call him from SCP. Uh, Bob Millman, 50 years of anniversary as an elder. He used to be a younger elder 
but now he's an old elder. <laughs> when I was first asked to write something nice about Bob, my reaction was, why, where would I start? Where could I end? What should be in the middle? Armed with the vision in mind, I thought I would try something new, to start at the beginning and see what happens. There is a time when we all become aware of someone. It's hard to define, but not for me. Although I've heard about Bob, my sister told me of a time when she was driving Bob's car during one of the youth hikes, uh, bike trips. Uh, at, at a stop, Bob came over and put his ac active uh, Charmius bike pants into the glove box. Uh, my sister told him that she, she was appalled, but I said to myself, I need to meet this guy. He has class. From there, it was an awareness of Bob and his family as they uh, pastored the Red Deer Church. My parents went to Red Deer Church and often talked how much they enjoyed this brilliant scholar, the masterful teacher, uh, and the family atmosphere was a true friendship. But what they were talking about, <laughs> but what they were talking about was his wife, Gail. <laughs> I didn't even pre-read that. Sorry, Bob. Oh, boy. You are all those things, I, I attest. Not to worry, they included Bob in the compliments too. There you go, Smitty, good job. Now you have to understand something about the old ways the church are. In the old days, we used to literally re revere the pastor. It wasn't until years later we discovered they were just people, not infallible and not perfect. It was during this time that my interaction became more frequent with Bob via Silver Meadows, and he and his family eventually had been transferred to Edmonton. As every member of the church family came to know Bob, really was the epitome of a perfect yet imperfect pastor. In other words, he could be a man of the cloth, also a Monty Python, a Farley Towers, and Beatles, and Mike Knopfler? Mm. Indeed, it was the discovery of that part that made me want to know Bob better, especially the Monty Python part, I agree. Bob and his generosity, which, by the way, is one of his wonderful traits. Amen to that. I know this because he told me. <laughs> no, really, he's generous to a fault. Also, his faith and trust of the Word of God has defined his life. We have all benefited from example and gentle leadership. I'm tempted to say Gentile leadership, <laughs> but that works too, lol. Uh, 20 years ago, Bob gave me a room to stay at his house while I was attending university. He had recently lost his precious wife, Gail. It was heartbreaking and difficult time for him, but I was privileged to listen and share many of the inner thoughts. I learned to appreciate Bob in a whole new way and a treasured way. As my semester went by, I started to appreciate more of the fun and yet weird ways Bob, Bob thinks. One would expect a pastor just to break out into hymns and start preaching, or to recite scripture while in, at home. But no, this was not the case. <laughs> I discovered that Bob can recite every word from Monty Python's skits <laughs> in the front room of starting to singing Monty Python or the Lumberjack song. <laughs> I'm a lumberjack and I don't care. Anyway, in fact, to him to do church, uh, yeah, he asked you actually to do that in church today. No, no, no. <laughs> I guarantee it was the best entertainment I've never paid for. And Bob and I continued our friendship. Once I paid for my room and board in full was our main mutual interest, Monty Python, Faulty Towers, The Beatles, and oh yeah, Silver Camp. So yeah, you converted him. Good. Bob inherited the camp and maintenance uh, just by virtue of being the Edmonton pastor. Camp should, would, simply would not be the same uh, if, if through the building process and the main things that you've been in, uh, during your time. Leadership and willing to uh, the generous funds, all of that that went into SCP. The following story, while may not be 100% accurate, tells of the fine time the staff dorm of Silver Meadows was being considered. In my role as camp director, I had a certain reluctance to allow beer and wine for the staff, and of course, Bob was the opposite. <laughs> he had a certain reluctance to not not allow those things. <laughs> Bob prevailed and won the debate, but also won by insulting on a bigger and more accessible septic tank. <laughs> so you had the wine and you had the septic tank. Ah, oh, you get the better half of that. Often I think the septic tank has been referred to as the Smitty place. <laughs> By the way, that's itty, not sm, yeah, not sh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. The camp is sold now, but the memories of hundreds of volunteers and the stories will always remain. And for majority of the camp's existence, it was due to Bob's vision and work, yes. 
I now need to bring this uh, tre tre uh, treaty to a conclusion. Or tre treasury? Whatever that. Yeah, his, his telegram. Bob, you are one of the finest persons, pastors of the church has ever known. Um, for 50 years, you have served the Lord, grown in grace and knowledge, counseled innumerable times, made mistakes, got up, and trusted the Lord to help you move on. Your work and your examples have deepened our knowledge of Jesus. I personally know of many of your, uh, many, know of many of your kindnesses that could have never been counted up at all. Uh, never could have counted them. There are too many, right? You have served and continue to serve with so much dignity. Your servant's heart has been the guide to unnumbered souls. As a retirement looms, maybe, he puts in quotes, uh, you don't get to uh, reinvent yourself. We are reminded that you have left so much baggage at the feet of Jesus that he knows you on a first name basis. <laughs> he will always be your guide. Your trust and faith in the Lord truly shows you you are the personal friend of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for who you are, a friend of Jesus and a friend too. Congratulations to Bob on this special 50th anniversary to the man you've grown to be, and don't forget, we love Shelley too. <laughs> uh, yours in fun and spirit, Lee Schmitzen. I think the final one I've got here is from Bill Hall. Congratulations to Bob for making the milestone of 50 years in ministry to Jesus Christ. I've always remembered working with Bob as a business manager at the co uh, conventions in uh, Regina, and his welcome when he became a pastor in Saskatchewan just before his move to Edmonton. Bob has always had a concern for my well-being and for my family. And I know Avril and I will always appreciate his, and of course Shelley's, hospitality when we have the opportunity to be in Edmonton. Thank you, Bob, for being a pastor at heart and, uh, and have a heart that follows Jesus. Bill Hall. So now, I believe we have one... Uh, Al was going to say some words. You were gonna, are you ready for that? Yeah, we'll have that, and then I'll come up after. Um, did you want to hear? There. I want to pass on my congratulations to Pastor Bob here as well. That's scary. Seeing me up on TV there. <laughs> I've noticed that before. Anyway, I certainly agree with the many positive things that have been said about you, Pastor Bob. And uh, we go back uh, quite a few years as well. We were uh, in college together, and uh, perhaps he... Uh, and my late wife, Dorothy, were probably even closer friends than what he and I were at that time. But I remember, was it 68 or 69, you transferred over from England? And uh, <clears throat> I, I was there. And I remember, you worked on the portfolio, as I recall, which was the student ma magazine or uh, So I've had the opportunity to work with Pastor Bob over uh, a number of those 50 years and uh, certainly enjoyed that and starting in Vancouver and uh, I wrote some of this out here I should uh, just read it so uh, had the opportunity to be working with Bob in ministry over many years in several locations across the country starting in Vancouver he had just arrived in Canada and Dorothy and I had recently been transferred back to Vancouver from Edmonton. And so we both spoke in local congregations there in the Lower Mainland in Victoria, Vancouver Island. And we visited church members uh, at times together. I remember one day uh, we were visiting and he asked me to... Uh, he said, Al, can we go by Gail's? You wanted to talk to her about something. I'm, Bob may remember the story a little bit differently than, than I do, but anyway, this is my version. <laughs> and uh, so we went by Gail's, and he had her, uh, Gail is his late wife. But uh, so there I was. I waited in the car for about 20 minutes, as I recall. And he comes back out and informs me that he had just proposed to Gail. So I suggested to him he should take the rest of the day off. <laughs> and uh, a few other occasions I remember, and again, my version, I remember being out at one of the restaurants there on Kingsway Avenue. And uh, 
We'd been there, I, I suppose, two or three times over the, the months, and the waitress come by one time. She started chatting with us and assuming that we were undercover policemen. <laughs> and they'd been known to frequent that restaurant, evidently, and every word, and, you know, suit and ties and so on, like uh, the uh, d detectives or police uh, would often wear. Another time, and again, my recollection, uh, Pastor Bob and I were visiting in Richmond, and those of you, if you know Richmond, they have a lot of market gardens and a lot of uh, berry farms, and so we're visiting this lady, and she had a nice big berry farm, very proud of her blueberry wine, and uh, so she, of course, wanted us to sample her wine, and uh, we both, I think, our eyes bugged out when we saw how much she poured. They were like water glasses. Now, not big water glasses, but nevertheless, I would portray them as water glasses and pretty much filled them up. <laughs> we were both kind of aghast, and <laughs> let me tell you, neither of us finished them off. And hopefully she wasn't insulted too much. Another occasion, and you heard how Bob has been so involved in many activities in the church, whether it's ski trips, summer camps, uh, organizing conferences, we called the festivals in those days. And uh, so one time we were at the uh, summer camp just outside of Prince George. Pastor Bob was on the end of the dock helping the water skiers. And there was somebody else driving the boat and spotting. But Pastor Bob was on the, the dock there helping them get started. And uh, my late wife Dorothy, her mind started going. And this looked tempting, Pastor Bob on the end of the dock. But he had his wallet in his pocket. He had his wristwatch on. So somehow Dorothy <laughs> persuaded Gail, go out and tell him you need his wallet. Go get his wallet and go get his watch. And then after Gail had done that somehow, Dorothy just come up behind him, just give him a little push <laughs> off the end of the dock. Speaking of his generosity, uh, one summer, uh, they took our son Jonathan in as he was, uh, had a music gig in Saskatchewan, and they did a lot of touring through the province. But when he had uh, the home kind of for the uh, group, called Saskatchewan Express, was there in Regina. And so Pastor Bob and his family took our son in for that summer, which we really appreciated. Also back in 98, uh, Pastor Bob came down to a little community southeast of here called Sedgwick, did the funeral for my mother. <clears throat> and he and Shelley generously came to Calgary to do uh, Dorothy's, uh, it's my late wife, doing her memorial service. So I want to thank you, Shelley, for being a, a good friend to Dorothy and to Betty and to many others as you serve in ministry. And so there was Bob always willing to tackle new challenges and step up to help with whatever projects came up, as has already been mentioned a number of times. Very generous in helping others. And so thank you, Pastor Bob, for your 50 years of service. We, uh, we're gonna do a live stream from uh, Thailand. We, we didn't quite figure that was gonna work out, but we got something better, I think. I watched it this morning. Are we ready to roll that? I won't tell you who it is, but you know who it is. Maybe, and then I'll come up and we'll have some more fun. Hello everyone, special greetings from Bangkok and especially hello to you, Dad. Um, I hope you are enjoying a lovely surprise today and uh, receiving all the appreciation that is coming your way for 50 incredible years of service in your role as a pastor. What a beautiful milestone to celebrate. And um, of course, if it's 50 years of service as a pastor, that means I'm 50 years old, so I'm not quite sure how I feel about that reminder, but, uh, but I am certainly with you in spirit today and have been thinking a little bit about uh, what it looked and felt like to watch you go through your life of service um, in that role 
and um, I've had a lot of nice memories float to the surface as I as I think about that in your honor today. You know, I can picture you walking around the house on Friday nights or Saturday mornings, sort of rehearsing your, your sermon and uh, talking to yourself, <laughs> gesticulating or, or um, you know, driving in the car and conducting the hymns or the hallelujah chorus as you prepared to, to lead, lead uh, music at the festival, for example, or, or even sitting at your desk for hours on the end, um, working through administrative tasks as you plan things like uh, winter, winter socials or, or cycle trips or volleyball tournaments or track meets or any of those things um, or special services. Um, it was always nice to be uh, known as Mr. Millman's daughter uh, because you know certainly as a teenager it was uh, it was well known amongst the teenagers that Mr. Millman was a nice guy and had a great sense of humor was lots of fun he's sort of the, the cool pastor uh, that kind of street cred goes a long way when you're 13 and 14 years old uh, until of course you end up at the the provincial track meet and everybody stood around in the morning and Mr. Millman's called upon to say the opening prayer through the uh, through the loudspeaker at the track and uh, all right, everyone, please bow your heads, bow your heads. Uh, and uh, dear, dear Father in heaven, heaven, uh, we ask that everyone does their personal breast today, I mean best today, <laughs> which of course caused the masses of teenagers to break out into fits of, fits of giggles. But uh, anyways, dad, you know, really everything from the, the cow trough for baptisms in our, our uh, basement, uh, to, um, you know, being, being left behind at church <laughs> because you were so immersed in, in uh, a job or a task where you ended up taking somebody else home after services who didn't have a ride or, or uh, even just um, watching you head out at the wee hours of the morning to a home or a hospital to offer prayer and comfort to somebody in need. I mean, all of this is really a testament to your heart of service. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. I think you've been well placed in this career, and I think that um, sort of an innumerable number of people uh, would agree with me in that, and that's why you're being celebrated today. So, thank you for that legacy of service, of generosity, of care, compassion, and empathy. And um, I wish I could be there to give you a great big hug and congratulate you in person. But uh, we'll we'll raise a toast when I'm home next summer uh, to you and uh, this amazing. Um, uh, career that you've had in the in the church. Thank you for so many wonderful memories and for such a beautiful example. And to all of you celebrating today, thank you for for that effort. And um, I'm with you in spirit and sending you all the very best wishes. I'd like to now invite Jacob to come up. Yeah, yeah. Applause that for sure. I, that was very special. Um, we're going to have a slideshow, and uh, we thought music was nice, and, and I think Jacob's been working on this piece for a while, so we'll, we'll go ahead and let him play, and we'll play the slideshow. So, uh, yes, Jacob playing for Elise, or for Bob, maybe? <laughs>
Thank you, Jacob. Well done. I think we can let the few slides. I tried to time them with the song, but that's, you know. But anyway, there's some. This is the cutest. Look at that. So we, we collected a bunch of these. Sue is the one actually running around trying to get everybody's photos and the uh, telegram. So Sue, amazing job. Yeah, such love for Bob, yeah. So we thought we'd pamper you today, and uh, after you can give your Oscar acceptance speech, sermon, <laughs> five minutes. Anyway, there's a few. Remember this? <laughs> yeah, there's a few more. Um, Jerry will be doing the final uh, presentation, I think, um, after the slideshow, but uh, we, uh, we really love you, Bob, and we, we really appreciate you. We want to spoil the heck out of you um, and to surprise you and... Yeah, and this is where we are today. So I think uh, Gary, you want Jerry, you want to want the mic here? You want up here or? Okay. Oh, ladies first, sorry. <laughs> Welcome, Shelly. <laughs> Bob? Thank you. Nice pictures. By the way, when did you stop shaving the top of your head there? I waited till I was 40. <laughs> yeah. We have a few things to present to you on behalf of the congregation. First, uh, we have a plaque that... Uh, I don't have to tell you who made it up, it was only, it was Ken. It says, congratulations to Robert John Marriott Millman on passing 50 years of service and ministry from October 17, 1973 to October 17, 2023. Thank you for your continued leadership and guidance of our congregation, and it's signed from Grace Communion Edmonton. And we have a few other <clears throat> parting gifts for you. <laughs> There's a gift bag there and a couple bottles of wine to wash everything down with. So on behalf of the congregation and everyone here and many of those who are watching online, thank you very much for your many years of service and we hope for many more. And uh, at great personal risk, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you. The two of you now. <laughs> well... Actually, I'm, uh, I'm equipped because uh, I, I thought I was going to give the sermon today, but I guess... You have five minutes. Yeah, I have five minutes. <laughs> I, uh, you know, in the, in the words of uh, uh, some one Canadian, he said, uh, you know, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> um, I am really, really touched, and I understand now why Shelley was poking around looking at the little things on the wall there, because the reason you have that picture of my ordination certificate is she took the picture. That must have been it. And um, I uh, do vividly remember the day that I was ordained in England, and it was at a festival in Paynton, and George Patrickson, who wrote that nice note, he was one of the ones that you read, uh, uh, there was a, uh, a brief discussion in front of my home church congregation and my parents uh, as to uh, the qualifications for ministry. And because I had come from Canada to there, I remember Charles Hunting simply saying, we take it on faith that these have been fulfilled. In other words, we're not sure about this, but Dean Wilson back in Canada said you should be ordained, so hey, whatever, because I had come from Canada, but of course I'd been to the people in England, this little, little teenager. And so uh, there were three men who prayed over me, and uh, the one who led the prayer actually was Dr. Roderick Meredith. And if you ever knew Dr. Rod, if you'd gone to college there, he was a great one for gesturing. He wanted to have these strong gestures. And uh, so when they laid hands on me, George Patrickson was on the other side. And as Dr. Meredith prayed over me, he gestured. He gestured, and after this, it was over, uh, George Patrickson said, Bob, I really thought your head was going to come off of my hands. <laughs> so I do have vivid memories of that particular day, and I thank you, uh, thank you very much for taking the picture and, uh, and uh, putting a few people up to this, and uh, to all of the rascals you participated. 
Uh, one thing I do learn, I did learn along the way, is you're only as strong as the team you play on. And I've always been privileged to play on a very strong team, and you are still the team that I'm privileged to play on. And uh, thank you, Al, for all those embarrassing memories. Uh, and uh, yes, I really did say to George Patrickson, now I understand why you don't link or plow an ox with an ass. Uh, because I think we came pretty close to going, doing a face plant as we came off of the list, uh, the lift. Uh, I appreciate the nice words uh, from uh, Lee Smithson, I think. Um, and uh, to those of you who did the research, and again, I think Shelley uh, probably stirred that up behind no, the means. Yeah. All right, Sue was the one who really did that. Okay, thank you very much. And, uh, and well, it's just a privilege to have uh, been of service. Uh, although it is confusing to think that for many of you, you probably think, wow, 50 years, he must have started when he was six years old. <laughs> because it is kind of confusing. Uh, if I may change, tell one final embarrassing story, uh, the other day uh, somebody asked me uh, if uh, Shelley would be interested in doing a little work for them. And I said, yeah. So I passed the name along and Shelley went to visit this lady and uh, she walked in and the lady said, who are you? And she said, well, I'm Shelley Bradford. We had a 10 o'clock appointment. She said, uh, oh, you're Bob's wife. Gee, I expected somebody much older. And so, <laughs> Unfortunately, these are things are deceptive, so we are uh, very privileged, and it's uh, a great privilege to take the chocolate and the wine home. I'll enjoy the chocolate, and I'll leave. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, we will uh, enjoy that together, and again, thank you as a team that I'm privileged to play on and be a part of. God bless. Thanks thank you. Thank you. Hey. Brookie and Victoria. Oh, hey, Brookie, is that you? Yes, it is. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. You're at the back, and, well, with age comes dimness of wisdom, uh, of wisdom. No, 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 a vision, I'm saying. And you know my daughter, Victoria. And so, hey, good to see you guys, too. God bless. Thank you. Okay, hello. Congratulations, Pastor Bob, and from our family, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank God for you, because you're not our, not only our pastor, but you're a friend, and an always help in times. Thank you so much, Pastor Bob. So our next song before the sermon, um, we'll have this title again: "Christ is mine forevermore." Please rise. I have played this song once, and I know you're going to be familiar with this. Christ is mine. Bye. 
Mark said, uh, sorry we hijacked the service, but uh, we uh, had planned to have communion at the close today. And uh, that was uh, based on our uh, assigned reading for the Revised Common Lectionary. And uh, just as uh, I am very grateful that you honor me today for uh, 50 years of pastoral ministry, uh, I'm very, very, very aware that uh, the pastor that uh, inspired me uh, was the Apostle Paul. And uh, if I had given the sermon, it was based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. So let's just take a moment to look at that because it led very directly to uh, the uh, communion that we were going to close with, and we still will. And so if we consider Paul's uh, ministry, uh, I want you to uh, understand that when I say uh, he, he had nothing but trials and tribulations. I had a great deal of joy and friendship and reward. And uh, Paul going before all of us, and of course that's the reason we still honor him after 2,000 years, uh, he wrote to the church at uh, Thessalonica uh, the uh, words that I hope you can find where he commented on the way he had to serve 
which I confess has never been a burden I've had to carry. But he said, uh, you know, we worked hard among you. And he said, so as not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. And he said, you are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. And in very simple terms, uh, he understood he was set apart, uh, that he had uh, to consider what was right, which is what righteousness means, and to not be plating himself out for criticism. Doesn't mean to say he thought he was perfect, but he understood his responsibilities. And then he commented on, and he, he wasn't bragging about this, but he said, for you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children. And eventually, as fathers, hopefully we come to understand the encouraging, comfort, and urging to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And then he added, we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you, who believe. And when we consider our shared calling, uh, the uh, team that we are called to be a part of, which is the body of Christ, then we understand why we take communion and we acknowledge the fact that we sit at the same table, we are nourished by the same elements, which are the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, and that is the source from which we take our shared life and the way in which we are again reminded that we share not just family, not just friendship, but the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So uh, as we take communion today, we will pass the elements and we will share that together at the close of our service. And we just take a moment to ask God's blessing and his acceptance of this particular moment. Let's, let's pray. Our Father in heaven today, uh, uh, we didn't uh, quite get to explore the scriptures as I anticipated, but we do get to explore the fact that we are on a shared journey with you into life everlasting. And that journey is made possible for each of us because of the sacrifice of our Savior, Jesus, our Lord and our Christ. Uh, we ask that the elements that we share together, that we celebrate together today, will be a reminder to all of us that we are nourished moment by moment because of his sacrifice, that we are nourished daily by his presence in our minds and our hearts as you, the Holy Spirit, come to be with us and dwell in us. We are reminded of the uh, reconciliation that's taken place and the complete freedom and forgiveness that we enjoy because of the sacrifice and the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as we share these elements together and as we contemplate them together, we're reminded that we journey together because we are bound together as a family and we are nourished by you moment by moment. So we thank you, we give thanks and praise to you, and we're very grateful for the worship music that we shared, for the brief reading of scripture, and for the fellowship that you have given to us as you, the Holy Spirit, continue to dwell with us and lead us onwards. We, so we thank you today in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let me just ask.